pretty exciting. 15 minutes of BRSCC Mazda MX-5 action. It's Sebastian Fischer on pole for the first time in his MX-5 career alongside Brian Trott. Wait for the lights to go out. They do so, and they're underway in racing. It's a pretty good start from Fisher from pole position. Trot tries to go with him on the inside run down towards Cops Corner. Also peeking out is Oliver Graham in the uh, blue and orange number 24 as they head out through Cops for the first time. There's Ollie Orwood in the white and blue number 63. And number 95 there is Ian Blake, one of the many AB Motorsport run cars. But they all seem to have got through, fingers crossed, the first few corners okay but it's fisher in the lead he's been looking pretty quick so far in testing and the qualifying pace showed that for third position just behind brian trotter gets a little bit sideways paul blackwall chambers goes up the inside of jack brewer to relieve him the third matt paul in the 55 is there as fraser fennick gets oh. banging door mirrors with all of the graham as they come down the back straight and further back oh goodness me oh up and over goes ed worthington two more cars involved one i think was the 15 of that was brandon abraham and hopefully he's okay. They race on. There might possibly be at least a safety car, I'm afraid. Dolly Allwood looks up the inside. It's three abreast, and there's a red flag. Yeah, and I, I think, truthfully, say. to be fair, Chaz, no surprise. And I really hope, with the first and foremost, that Ed Worthington's okay after what was Ooh, a rather nasty-looking roll. And everyone's trying to close up as they see the red flags a little late. But that, unfortunately, Chaz, was not the way he wanted to start the MX-12 action for this, for this morning's racing. No, especially not with uh, the, a rollover. I mean, these cars do have incredibly sturdy roll cages, as you can see. And... You know, they're all made to fantastic regulations and standards, so I'm very sure that Ed will be okay. We'll have to just wait and see that uh, they get, well, let's just hope they get that cleaned up very quickly as well and, uh, and we can get back to racing. But first and foremost, let's just hope that Ed Worthington is okay. But um, it has to be the car that I say is pretty, isn't it? Ends up on its roof. I mean, I've heard of commentators' curses before, but this is my first time here at Silverstone and the first time commentating on this series. And I'm, I'm sorry, Ed. But, um, like I say, I can, I can joke and make light of it all I can. But, yeah, we just hope he's all right. But um, it, was, it was a very interesting first couple of corners. I was just watching on the circuit cameras. I mean, I, you saw me lean over very aggressively. The fact that I was like, really? They're making it round there? There were four wide going around cops. It was amazing. Yeah, so oh, here we go. we've got a bit of a replay here just to go through it. So the camera switch, we caught it late. But actually that went over and it ended up on its side. In fact, it ended up being it's, upside it's down. Through, so. didn't it? it was weird because he was... He was sort of away from the other two cars when it was going over. It was like he might have been clipped, I think, maybe wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact with another car in there. Not sure whether he was directly involved with those other two cars, um, Abraham being one of them, mm. that had already gone off. Um, whether, the, you know, there might have been a couple of cars got together and maybe in avoidance, you know, everyone changes direction quite quickly. And in a bunched field like this, it's easy to make very sudden contact. And we've we've seen it before you know wheel to wheel contact no matter what car it's in a lot of the time with these as well they're quite low to the ground so the uh, the weight gets flung up on its side very quickly and it'll go over so so on our timing screens the new race distance is one green flag lap and then a 10 minute race which means that it will be reduced in length because of course we've got a timetable to get through of other races to try and keep on schedule as much as possible but as you mentioned as the race was stopped within the first two laps it means that everyone is in the same grid positions that they were originally which means that sebastian fisher keeps his pole position and will get another chance to lead away from the front row alongside brian trott and it'll be an option to see if Jack Brewer and Will Blackwood Chambers can make some moves up as well. It was also a strong start for Oliver Graham, who was up there getting past a couple of cars and not such a good getaway for Oliver Allwood. I noticed that he started around sort of fifth or sixth on the grid, but dropped down sort of around the top ten. So he's going to possibly try and make up some more spots if he can. There's Ollie Allwood there in 63 in the white and blue AB Motorsport car. There's plenty of these cars in the mix. I mean, last time we came here to Silverstone with this championship, two of their cars won races in Group A outright. We had Matt Luff and Fraser Fennick both took a win each. That was their first ones in their first season of a championship. Nice. So they've made some, <laughs> some great gains over the winter. Uh, one car into the pit lane is Richard Wooten at number three. So it looks like he's going to have some trouble and possibly might be starting from the pit lane as we get the cars formed up onto the grid. And there is Richard Wooten inset there at the bottom right. So whatever the issue is for Richard, sadly. And he shares the same team morning with Adam Craig, who is not in this race, but he will be on the grid for the uh, A and B grid race later on. So once again, as the cars form up onto the grid, it's the silver and purple car with the black bonnet is number 81, Sebastian Fisher. Alongside him there is Brian Trott in car number 83. Looks like Wooden actually isn't making it down the pit lane. He's actually having to get a push from the marshals as well. He's not quite. It's something's obviously just turned off on the car. It's completely shut down, and they're having to push it down the pit lane now, I'm afraid. He's Looks not really making any progress. But the rest of the grid, though, is still lined up. We should be good to go. Green flag at the back. Let's try this again, shall we? Ten minutes of BRSCC Mazda MX-5 Championship action is all set to get underway. Watch for the red lights in the bottom right of the screen. They will go on. 
And then they'll be underway. Red lights on. Revs will rise. They dump the clutch and we're away for the second start of race one of the, of the day for the Mazda MX-5 Championship. Away they go from the grid. All of them heading down towards Cops Corner. And it's a decent start once again. It's side by side for the lead between Sebastian Fisher and Brian Trott. Side by side also for Ollie Graham and Razor Femme because they lean on each other on the exit of the corner. Ollie Orbit again with a shaky start. He's coming under threat from Michael Nibs. And one car's going a bit slowly on the exit of Cops and our cameras. But apart from that, Sebastian Fisher leads the way down into Magnus Beckett's for the first time. It's Trot in second place, back into third place. He's done it again as well, Blackwell Chambers. They're all trying to be sixth and seventh on the exit. And let's hope this time they all get through cleanly. Looks like and it. So they are. The rest of the field goes streaming through. Couple of fly by side moments at the back, but they've all got through nicely. So down at the racing speeds on the Wellington straight towards Brooklands. And Brian Trot already moving out to try and take the lead. And Blackwell Chambers is going with him. Under brakes into the left hander. And Trot, who was promoted into yesterday's race win after Joe Wiggin was disqualified for an infringement, he is now into the lead on the road. There's Bill Taylor in the mix battling with Ian Blake as they head up through Brooklyn's one car running wide in the back. I think that's one of the Attard cars in there as well. It's possibly either Sam or Oliver Attard because it's uh, got a rookie cross on the back and I'm pretty sure British GT champion Marco Attard is anything but a rookie, I think. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But across the line to end lap one then and it's going to be side by side for believe because here comes Sebastian Fisher trying to retake the lead and Will Blackwell Chambers will be in the slipstream. Fraser Fennick is up to fourth. It's Brewer fifth and Graham Allwood, Nibs, Pollard and Owen Mills who's lost four spots where he started on the grid in sixth down to tenth. But already looks like it's going to be a frantic battle for the lead here as they come up to it. One car running wide is Tim <laughs> Dore in the 37. But again, side by side for the lead. This is going to be a bit of a theme, I think. And Will Blackwell Chambers, if Fisher keeps the door open, might want to follow him through here. And what's Sebastian is saying, after you boys, through goes one, through goes two, because Trot and Blackwell Chambers got through. Is Fraser Fennick going to try and follow him through here? He will be side by side on the exit. But this lead group already, Chad, is starting to form here, and it's bigger than it was in yesterday's first race. It's crazy. I mean, yeah, Trot was uh, definitely one of those drivers to watch yesterday. And like you say, he got promoted to the race win after the disqualification down the inside not quite making it work there i was just going to say that out of beckett she saw them using every inch of the circuit because these cars as it's all one make and they're so close together in terms of pace and the drivers are all so close together in terms of pace is it's all about momentum and you've got to use all of the circuit as soon as you lose a tiny bit of momentum or go out of the slipstream in this now they're just flying down down woodcote just looking out the window it's an incredible sight there's just an absolute mazda centipede going past it looks absolutely brilliant all the way down the straight and trot is really having to work here to defend this lead but door that you mentioned in the bright yellow and green machine got a fantastic start it looked like he gained about three places before they got to cops yeah, he's in 11th place, the top 11, would you believe, are all in one group together. <laughs> we had a top nine yesterday. It was top 10 briefly until there had a bit of contact for, I think it was Ben O'Hare, and he dropped back. But now for yeah. third place down the outside comes the 263 of Fraser Fennick. He looks for a podium spot if he can. And Fisher tries to fight back, and Fisher had a great start, but he's just losing ground in these opening laps here if he can try and make, work it out. There's the Australian Tim Dore at the back of that group. He's trying to follow on to the back of, uh, looks like that's Matt Pollard, who's been passed by uh, Oliver Mills, uh, Owen Mills. Now, the one that's making the move here is Oliver Allwood. He had a bit of a poor start. He's up to fifth at the end of the second lap, but he's looking for fourth and maybe even third down the inside into Brooklyn's, but his teammate Fennett shuts the door, and now Sebastian Fisher behind him. He's come under attack from his teammate, Oliver Graham, in the blue and orange car, running wide oh. at the exit of Brooklyn's. That's Owen Mills who's trying to get past past Michael Nibs and he's now on the tail of Jack Brewer so Brian Trott looking to make it two wins out of two for him this weekend Fraser Fennick is up to second place though so he has made that move he was under attack from that's interesting he was under attack from Ollie Hallwood so I think it must have been a mistake for Will Blackwell Chambers that's lost him second place so it is an AB mode sport one two and it could be a one two three if all we can find a way past Blackwell Chambers and I'm pretty sure if Valley Bray's watching he'll have a smile as wide as anything knowing that he's got three of his cars up in the top five and smash your fish is not finished either because he's in fifth position on the tail and this top five are starting to break away and edge away slightly down towards magazine and beckett's and here comes fennec for the lead up the inside in the white and cyan car number 263 trot gets edged sideways and runs wide on the exit now it's blackwall chambers in the blue and white car with the green trim number 18 double champion from 2017 and 2018 He's down with the mix to try and make it third place. And here comes Ollie Allwood in the outside line in the white and blue car. And if we're not careful, Chaz, it could be four abreast down towards the complex at Brooklands. It could be indeed. You know, these, these guys aren't scared enough to make that. They're absolutely on it constantly here. The top five right together. A bit of a slide there from, I believe it was Fenwick. Oh, sorry, it was Fisher. Apologies. They're still stuck together. They've broken away a little bit from the rest of them, but one decent bit of slipstream and is all you need to close back in trot is trying to get this lead back there is the number 18 of blackwell chambers though he wants to get back up onto that podium spot 
like you said though Scott it must have been a mistake earlier and it's easy to make a mistake in this pack and the thing is as I mentioned yesterday on the PA is the fact that if you're in a group like this now I mean if you're in third place like Allwood for example if you try and make a move and then it compromises you you could very easily lose one maybe two or even three spots here very, very key. Also, we should mention that the one that's most wrong also is one of your favourite looking cars, Michael Nibbs. He's in sixth <laughs> and he's in the mix with Jack Brewer in seventh. Rest of the top ten is only Graham in eighth position. Ninth is at the moment Owen Mills, but I just caught in the glimpse of my eye there on the camera that he was running wide alongside Matt Pollard. And I was right, they're side by side. <laughs> and also getting the mix is Tim Dorr. So he's also another one of the AB Motorsport cars. He runs a lot of cars in the championship. He's got quite a few, about four or five in the top ten, which will, I'm sure, will please him greatly. But he's got all got three of them, leading the top three positions. So they're going to go into inter team combat here. Because because Fraser Fennick oh. is under attack from Trot, who is under attack from Allwood, who is under attack from Blackmore Chambers, <laughs> who is under attack from Sebastian Fischer. It's so the conjoining phrase, isn't it, at the moment? It really is. It's, it's just an endless train of Mazda MX-5s, and it's brilliant. It's only a 10-minute race. We're coming up to four minutes to go there. I don't want this to end in any case. Well, it's a 10-hour race. We, we could do, absolutely. <laughs> so this is now through Woodcut now to end lap five. Trot's Not just pushed his teammate. Just looked out the window then as they came past, and he's literally pushing him down the straight. There was contact all the way through Woodcut. It's fantastic. Fantastic. That's, that's, that's teamwork for you with yeah. these guys. Love tap. Yeah, absolutely. As, or as Jimmy Broad would say, little kiss. I think yeah, on that kiss. side. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, now we're going to three and a half minutes to go now. Lap six, fastest lap of the race has gone to Jack Brewer. One minute, 11.627. So he'll get the bonus point. Here comes Ollie Allwood for second place into Maggots and Beckett. Up the inside. He gets his teammate wide. Out of the way, Brian. I'm the one that's mixed for the championship. Get out of the way. And into the in second place he goes. Now, he really wants to try and win the race because of what's everything been going on around his championship contenders. Mike Comber's not in this race. Blackwood Chambers missed the race yesterday. And, of course, Joe Wiggin would disqualify from that race. This is a prime opportunity for him to score maximum points if he can. And he's, and he's going, going for it. And the inside. Up the inside line. And also Fraser Fennec has left the door open for not only Brian Trott, but possibly Blackwood Chambers and even possibly Sebastian Fisher if he can go around the outside of Blackwood Chambers to fourth into Luffield, which he has. That's brilliant move from the pole set to Sebastian Fisher up into fourth place. And here comes Michael Nibbs. He shoves him out wide and says, don't mind if I do. I'll take fifth position back if you don't mind. And also yeah. look at Jack Brewer in the 93. Will Blackwood Chambers is marching towards the back of the top ten with this. And it's that key thing you mentioned. One small slip in momentum and not only lose one place, particularly in the these cars at a circuit like this he's lost two or three in succession yeah it just happened before you can even blink you know you've got just so much pressure on behind and speaking of pressure on behind there it looked like Blackwell Chambers was trying to just inspect the boot of the car in front there <laughs> absolutely brilliant stuff that's a new scrutineering process I've, uh, I've never seen before but Fisher at the moment you could say landed a big one a moment ago He's up into fourth place, though, and he needs to get back into that top three. But the three cars ahead have really been the class of this group at the moment. But Nibs right up there at the moment into fifth position. Brewer has got ahead in the 93. And now Blackwell Chambers finds himself in seventh. But look at them all just darting, all trying to figure out what line are we going on. Trot goes down the inside. Now, he did this before. But he just doesn't get the turn in, as Allwood does. And Allwood just manages to hold on to it. And all Trot is doing when he's doing that is just compromising his own line. And Fenwick wants a piece of this as well, of course. He wants to try and get ahead. Looks like Trot's gone a little bit wide, although he actually tucks it in quite nicely and gets a good run out the final corner. Out the window once again. This is magnificent sight. The top nine all together. We'll just see what the gap is when they've all crossed the line. What is the spread between all of these cars? It is only 1.8 seconds between the top nine. That's two tenths a car on average. And we've got two laps to go. Now, what Blackwood <laughs> Chambers, you mentioned, is back to seventh place now. He's lost a place, another one to Jack Brewer. So he really did lose momentum. He was up as high as second place at one point, but he's losing out. Now, what's interesting, I'm going to point out as well, is that Michael Nibs is in fifth position. His best result he's had so far this year is sixth. He could get high if he can. It's up the inside for the lead. Goes Brian Trott at Beckett's corner. And again, Allward, he's lost momentum again because he's lost one place. He might lose to his teammate, Fraser Fennick. All three of these guys are absolute race winners. But Sebastian Fish and, and Michael Nibs, who still have a chance of getting at least a podium here, are still in the mix in fourth and fifth. As I said, best results of the season. Oh, there's a bit of contact from somebody. That was Fisher possibly trying to get past maybe Brian Trott or someone in the mix. One of the AB Motorsport cars has dropped back. It might be Fraser Fennick. As here comes Sebastian Fisher for third and now for second round the outside, possibly into Luffield, into Brooklyn. Up into Luffield. He can't make it stick, but he's into third place. Nibs goes up the inside looking for fourth. He tries to edge his way up the inside at the apex. He's absolutely... Oh flying out there. Oh. Will Blackwood Chambers, meanwhile, has got back past Jack Brewer into sixth. Also in contention is the blue and orange car of Oliver Graham. And look at this. They are pretty much three together for what is going to be possibly fourth position. We are into the final lap of this first race. 
I don't want this to end. It's fantastic. So, Ollie Allwood leads the way. That's crucial for his championship if he can hold on. Second place for uh, Brian Trot. Third for Sebastian Fisher, who started on pole. Fourth for Michael Nibs. Blackwood Chambers back up to fifth position. The biggest loser so far at the moment in terms of positions is Fraser Fennett because he went down to sixth. It might be seventh if he loses out to either Fraser, at least Jack Brewer. Also, Oliver Graham, he might get past as well. Up the inside, go and Fraser Fennett goes. Jack Brewer in the white and red car, number 93. But now the approach down the back straight for the final time. Who is going to win the drag race down towards Brooklyn. This is going to be the last big breaking jewel here. All Allwood has it. Everyone else wants it as they come back down <laughs> towards the complex. Here comes Fisher. He's gone for second place. Nib it's going to be three abreast into Brooklyn. Who's going to get it? Fisher's good on the outside line if he can hold on. Allwood. Nibs is in there too, but Allwood has his nose in front. Trot is in second place. It is Fisher for third. Michael Nibs is going to be fourth. That'll be a personal left for him if he can hold on. Blackwood Chambers is holding on for fifth position, but they come out of Luffield for the final time. And it is going to be Oli Orwood who took a victory at Cadwell Park. It is going to be an AB Motorsport 1-2. So they come up through Woodcut for the last time. Up to the chequered flag. And after a brilliant second race of the weekend for the Master MX-5 Championship, Oliver Orwood picks up his second win of the season. And he is delighted. He knows exactly what that means for the championship. He is pumped up for sure. What a win that was. Brian Trott in second place. And Sebastian Fischer gets his best result ever in the championship with third place. What a result from pole. Fourth for Michael Nibs. His best result. Blackwell Chambers might be disappointed with fifth, but it still points towards it. Then sixth for Fraser Fennick. Seventh for Jack Brewer. Eighth for Ollie Graham. And ninth for Matt Pollard. Top nine covered by 1.994 seconds. <laughs> How incredible was that, Chaz Raker? That, that was unbelievable. I've sat on the floor. I just need to calm down. It's just I would lie down if I could. But that was... Uh... That was an amazing race, and I mean, we knew at the top of it that it was going to be close between the top 10, maybe, maybe even just the top five, but the top nine there, as they stayed together, just proved to us how you can have such close racing in a series like this, and there was no, there was a tiny bit of contact here or there, but it was all fair game, you know, there was, there was no contact that ended anybody's race, there was nobody taken out by it, there was no really dirty driving in that, there was a lot of teamwork from the AB Motorsport cars near the front, but wow, that was, uh, that was phenomenal stuff, that really enjoyed that one, and Nibs, Managed to get that fourth place there, and uh, I'm very, very pleased for him. And that, like you say, Fisher as well, best result for him in the championship. So I know that, um, as you mentioned with Blackwell Chambers, he might not have been uh, might not have been as happy with fifth, but at the end of the day, he, he would have definitely enjoyed the race. Absolutely. Quickly run through the top ten then. Oliver Allwood wins by 0.174 of a second from Brian Trott with Sebastian Fisher taking his first podium in third place. Michael Nibs with a personal best result of fourth. Double champion former Will Blackwood Chambers finishes fifth after being as high as second at one point. Fraser Fennick finishes sixth from Jack Brewer. Then Oliver Graham, Matt Pollard and Owen Mills rounding up the top ten. And look at the gap between uh, ninth for tenth that shows how big that gap was. Ian Blake with 11th place from Tim Doran 12th. Bill Taylor gets 13th from Martin Canning. Impressive on his first weekend back for a couple of years in 14th place. Michael Green, then John Pethick, Harry Storer, Christopher Ginn, and then Sam and Marco Attard. Sam beats his father, so 19th go. and 20th. That's the family affair on that one. 19th and 20th to round out the top 20. 21st, Nick Ledoin. 22nd, Bo Parry. 23rd was Kian Donaldson from Thomas Holland and George King. That's Ashley Heath and Richard Bartlett from John from Fieldsend, Chris Watts and Robert Bond to round out the top 30. And then the last few cars from the races that we had, it's Andrew Dean, Oliver Attard and David Sculler round out the 33 cars that made it to the flag. Breathless racing. And we've got one more of those races coming up later on this afternoon at roughly around 10 to 3 on this beautiful sunny morning here at the Silverstone, the home of British motorsport with the British Racing Sports Car Club. As the cars are in the top three positions, we can hand down very shortly to Bryn Lucas, who we'll be having a chat with our top three, including, I'm pretty sure, a very much ecstatic Oliver Allwood. That is a win which he seriously needed for the championship, and with the compromise of his rivals around him, that possibly could be a key one. There's the celebration. He is delighted with that. And I'm sure Bryn Lucas, if we hand back down to him, will certainly appreciate the uh, effort that was put in. So Bryn, down to you. And uh, I'm sure you're going to have a very happy Oliver Allwood down there with his second win of the season. Yes, indeed. Very, very happy scenes down here. You can see just what that meant to Oliver, who jumped out of the car and, uh, well, celebrated quite happily. Oliver Allwood there taking quite a, an impressive victory. We're going to go and get some words from these drivers. In fact, I'm going to get Oliver first of all. Oliver, can we have a word with you over here? So we're going to get a quick word with Oliver. We've got, let's go here, actually, this is cool. So, so Oliver, this was... Um, an interesting race for you. I mean, the top seven covered off by a second. Oh, wow. I didn't even know it was that close. I was just trying to concentrate on what was in front. I had Brian behind me pretty much most of the race. Um, just trying to cover him off. Um, 
but I knew once I hit the lead, I kind of had to stay there because this is Silverstone, that's what it's like. Uh, yeah, cracking race. It really was, and from your point of view, just as it should have gone, right? Textbook after the tricky start. Yeah, I completely fluffed the first start up. Um, got the second one up okay. Um, got off the line and just started making progress from there, really. Um, so, yeah, I just got to say a big thanks to the guys at AB Motorsport who worked so hard to get my car ready. We've had all sorts of problems this weekend, uh, and they've just done a brilliant job. So, yeah, big thanks to those guys and my dad as well. Great stuff. Well done. Cheers. Thank you. And let's get uh, another word, shall we? Who should we get? Let's go to second place. If we get Mr. Trot over, this is fantastic. If we can get you in front of here for us, please. And uh, we're moving on because I know the Fiesta Juniors are out on track already. So, Brian, that was uh, another very, very impressive race in the Mazdas. Oh, that was close all the way, and we knew before the start it was going to be a slip streamer. Um, the way the wind was blowing, if you were in front, you were a sitting duck, and um, not from the car behind, but from the like, two or three back. Um, and it was a case of just getting into the race, trying to stay somewhere near the front, and then attack near the end. Um, as it was my teammate, I was a bit kind to him. Um, the last couple of laps, I could have probably had a dive at him, but um, he's at the moment leading the championship, so I thought I'll play it safe. Um, try and get him somewhere else but to be fair he drove well, Wheel drove well, it was, um, it was a great race to be in. Yeah, it was a great race to watch, well done. Thank you very much. There you go, second place. We haven't got time to speak to third place because the races are coming thick and fast here at Silverstone. We're handing out back to the commentary pairing for coverage of the Fiesta Juniors from the BRSCC.